What's up, guys? Welcome back to our chit chat. Today, we are talking about education and the impact that creators are having on the education market and the traditional path um, for education that has been something that Michaela and I both have gone down. So Michaela, you have some interesting stats on what's going on in this space from a Gen Z perspective. So do you want to share a little bit with us to get the conversation started? Yeah, sure. So we're definitely seeing a big shift in this area. And I think a lot of that um, conversation kind of started with the pandemic and kids going to school in a new way. Um, So it's definitely had a huge effect on the way that young people view school, but Snapchat actually did a study during that time, um, and they found that a lot of students are kind of rethinking their career plans due to COVID, Um, and the stat was that 47% of U.S. students who had defined career paths previously are kind of reassessing their options. Um, And in addition to that, about half of forward-thinking Gen Zers and millennials, so 47%, want non-traditional career paths. Um, compared to Gen Xers and Boomers, which was 23%. So that's definitely a big difference. Um, And I think a lot of that has to do with the creator economy and influencers in the way that young people kind of see the opportunity to have a career in a non-traditional way. Yeah, and it's, I think you and I have a unique perspective potentially because we both did the traditional go to Mm -hmm. college for four years, I did five. And then, you know, start working, but not working in a traditional marketing job, right? Yeah. Uh, My path was a little different. I did, I did a little dance in the world of finance for a few years and then leaped into startups and social media, but we're sort of sitting here saying, okay, on one hand, we see the traditional, the traditional path, us, all of our friends, our family, they've kind of walked this traditional path, but you can see this voting sort of, or this emerging trend of people starting to sit back and say, hmm, hmm, right. And it's not Mm -hmm. just. I will say, I'm definitely going to point to obviously Charlie D'Amelio from the TikTok star, 124 million followers, but I don't think it's just her, right? I see people all over social media monetizing their accounts in ways that um, really haven't been done a a ton before. I mean, you Mm. and I have talked about this, but even on TikTok, there is a big push for these Amazon stores. Yeah. And influencers are sharing all sorts of stuff that they're doing in their house, but they're putting up their Amazon store with they're getting their affiliate link. So, you know, it might not be $50,000 a year that they're making, but it's a pretty solid side hustle, right? Yeah. You read a lot of articles, I think Business Insider highlights these a lot. And people are talking about, well, I make, you know, $700 a month. It's like, that's, that's no joke. I think if you right. take that $700 a month and you look at all of the influencers on TikTok and Instagram, they're the fin talk people and you talk about budgeting and how to make all this money. That's a lot of money you can put to work and you can, yeah. you know, you might be able to retire a little bit earlier, um, go on that vacation that you want to go on. So there are definitely financial incentives that are happening, um, <clears throat> at play. Yeah. And I think the interesting thing there is that, you know, sometimes with the traditional school route, you come out of school, you have this degree and you are going into a field where there really is a fixed amount of money you can make, right? Like you make raises, but there is really like a cap at, this is probably the average sure. of the most you're ever going to make in this type of job in marketing in whatever it may be. Sure. Right. But if you're starting a side job or you want to be a creator or you're a freelancer, you really can make as much money as, as you want, as hard as you want to work. Sure. Right. And I think young people are really starting to see that. And especially with social media, we're seeing a lot more entrepreneurs make content and share what that journey looks like. And I really think that aspect of it is having an impact on kids wanting to take a more non-traditional route. Oh, for sure. Plus, I mean, when they log into social media, you see all of these huge influencers doing deals with Dunkin' Donuts and launching, you know, their own live stream of their, you know, the very own MMA fight, right? Mm -hmm. They're not just doing like, here, I'm going to post this and like, hope it works. It's, you know, Charlie D'Amelio, Addison Rae, Logan and Jake Paul. These guys are... I think these guys are the the new moguls, the new business moguls mm-hmm. of their time, right? Yeah. And we were talking about this a little bit earlier. It's like, you know, these guys are making millions of dollars a year. And I don't know that, I don't know that like Gen X and boomers really understand that. Um, right. it's, it's, it's a hard world to understand, let alone understand the finances behind it. But, you right. know, these guys are making hundreds of thousands of dollars per post and, I mean, it's, it's kind of, it's, they're building businesses. They've got their own IP. Um, It's not just, like I said, it's not just like a paper post game anymore. So when you are sitting here to your point and you're looking at like, do I go into massive debt for college where I have a fixed 
in theory, like a fixed sort of income that you can hit? Or do I say, you know, no thanks college or that particular version of college. I'm going to try my hand at at becoming an influencer, a creator, doing something online because Mm -hmm. that's where the money is. And I can't learn that in school right now anyway. Right. right? This stuff happens so quickly. You just, you just can't. Yeah. And we've talked about this too before the idea that there are skills in terms of like maybe video editing or Mm -hmm. photography or like, and of course at specialized schools, you get that right. But in a traditional college setting, those sort of skills are hard to focus on and hone in on and learn. And, but those are really learnable online, right? You can watch YouTube videos, you can take online courses. And I think that's kind of the point we're trying to make, not that school isn't necessary for everyone or that everyone wants to be an influencer, but that there are other types of creative non-traditional jobs that you can teach yourself outside of the normal school setting and be really successful. Yeah. And make real money. Mm-hmm. You know, I think that's, you can always go back to college, right? Right. I think it's, it's just a very, it's a very compelling option that I think that we all have to, you know, take a step back and reassess like what's worth it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, what really makes sense here. And you and I were talking a little bit too about, is this a time for colleges to reinvent themselves a little bit? Yeah. I mean, one of the things I had thought earlier this year is like, if I, if, if I was a college student attending online courses right now, what, like, what would my experience be and what would I expect out of my school? And I think one of the things that I would expect is that they would be going out and finding different resources and sort of like, like speakers, um, that you can now get access to digitally. They can address, you know, a huge lecture of a thousand people you can host on a school's website with, I'll just pull a name out of here, like Mark Cuban to talk all about business, you know, and, and how he's built what he's built. Like, why would we not want to have access like that? if everything's going to be digitally. And I don't know of any that are doing it. So my thinking is like, well, what's the path here? Are we going to start to see professors go online and start to to teach like Mm -hmm. individual courses that you can buy in, you know, one course here or a three course package, or do like some sort of intensive seminar with a world renowned professor? Is that, is that sort of the new path forward or, and and that's even a little dramatic to say the new path forward, but is that an option that we think professors, um, and students alike are going to want to pursue. And I think the answer is yes. Yeah, I agree. And there's also room for brands too, right? Like there, of course there's education brands. This is a really good opportunity for them to come in, work with influencers and creators to share what they have available, what skills they can teach you. Um, And also for other brands, just to take notice and see that, you know, maybe not everyone is looking to take the traditional route and go to college and that messaging that way to young people might not be the best option. So how, how do we message to those people and to the people who are going the traditional route? Yeah, I agree. It's just, it's sort of like being aware of what your, your current and your future customers are going to pursue and and where to reach them and how to do things. And I think one of the ways that we have done, I think a really great example in partnership um, or for our partner, Adobe is we create a lot of tutorials, right. On how to use the products and we do it through creators. So Adobe sort of created their online, their YouTube vision is very educational in that way. They're, they're not taking from traditional college at all, but they are building and enhancing skill sets and helping people learn, which then in turn makes them lifelong users of the Adobe Creative Cloud software, which yeah. I think is genius, right? Yes. Um, and, and I definitely see a lot of other brands figuring that out, you know, technical skills um, we've seen, and I think we've talked about even, you know, the, the rise of financial um, Mm -hmm. fin talk, you know, and, and the like, but people talking about using programs and, you know, minted has done a great job. I think SoFi is doing a, a, you know, pretty solid job on connecting with their audience on social. And it really does come down to education. Um, we're learning, we're learning a ton on social media, right or wrong, that, that is where we're doing it. So I think if I'm a brand and I want to educate my client base, that's where you've got to be. Yeah, I agree. Very cool. Yeah. Well, good talk. I think um, if you're interested in exploring any of these education related um, topics, hit us up. Or if you're just saying, hey, we want to know more about this, we can talk to our our Gen Z audience in a, you know, a wider uh, and more deep sort of conversational range. Let us know. Yeah.